What's up everybody, thank you so much for tuning in. Today is mostly gonna be a bit of a discussion video. However, I also have this three pack blister of brilliant star to crack into um, sporadically amidst the conversation. But I think I have a pretty interesting topic out there for all of you. Um, whether you are, I mean, if you're watching this video, I'm assuming that you're a consumer of Pokemon in some way, shape or form. Um, this one's particularly geared towards like the buyer seller relationship. So um, I'll get started with just me like cracking into this as I introduce the topic. This would probably be a good time for me just to have a face cam, but I'm not into that. So this is the best I can do for you. But the topic of today's discussion is that deadbeat buyers are on the rise. So let's quickly define a deadbeat buyer before I um, talk about this topic any further. So when I say a deadbeat buyer, what I mean is a buyer who um, commits to purchasing an item, but then does not actually end up paying for it. So this has happened to me and a few other sellers that I communicate with on a regular basis and seemingly increasing levels over the course of the past few months. Now, the interesting thing that I'll note here is that the Pokemon card market in general has been more of a buyer's market in recent months, I would say like over the past six months as compared to the um, prior year and a half that were before it. Um, however, in the time that like the market was the worst to be a buyer in, whenever an item sold, you could almost guarantee, and I say almost guarantee, that the buyer was gonna actually pay for it. So that money was going to be entering your, um, whether it's like a revolving income or you know just you cashing out, whatever the case may be. However, in recent times, um, buyers have been seemingly increasing in committing to purchase an item and then not paying for it. Now, I've been tracking this information for a couple of weeks now, and it has just gotten unbelievable. So, if you click my U or if you click my eBay link, which is in the description below, um, shameless plug, but also informative you'll see that I am like not a super, super high voluminous seller. Um, I have like 250 feedbacks and I believe I have, you know, like 90, 90, between 90 and 100 items listed for sale at any given time. So definitely not like a high flyer by any stretch of the imagination, but, uh, you know, and I'll also disclose this. So I am averaging like well, let's see, on a good week, I'll make like five sales. Okay, so with that being said, not a ton of like churn and burn happening at this point in, in today's market, at least. With that being said, um, over the past four weeks alone, I have, re I have um, not reported, but I've experienced on average one to two buyers per week that either make an offer or just outright buy an item and then they end up not paying for it. Nice, more Peco V. That does not count as a good pull from this set. <laughs> but yeah, so when we take a look at that, so one to two buyers per week that commit to buying an item and then in fact do not. What I mean by that is like sometimes I'll send off, I usually send offers to buyers like either on Fridays or Sundays. Um, and I like to let buyers like sit with my items for a while in our watch list before I actually send an offer. Um, I'll get into the psychology of that later, but for now it's like, okay, so whether I send an offer out, someone makes an offer to me or whether they just hit buy now, I don't really do many auctions. So that's why that option is omitted. But in those three options, one to two buyers a week on average, some more, some less are committing to buy an item and then they just will ghost me and not actually complete the sale. Now, the frustrating thing is like, when you make an offer and I accept it, you are quite literally naming your price. It doesn't get any better than that. So to have buyers in that category, especially back out, it's super frustrating. And you might be thinking like, oh man, a poor, poor eBay seller, like not making this money. Well, you know, this isn't my sole line of income. And honestly, right now, everything is not like insanely profitable. I mean, a lot of the stuff that I have, I did get at a pretty low margin. So I am... I'm making out fine, but I'm not just offloading product right now. Um, the thing that's important in this situation is I'm making like five sales on a good week. That means if I have one buyer commit to buying an item and falling through, that's 20% of my sales that are like not being completed, which is nuts. Um, so when you look at that, like 20% of buyers, and this is heavily anecdotal. So 
Um, the reason I'm mentioning this is because other buyer, other sellers that I speak to that do more volume as well as some who do less volume than me are reporting the same issue. Um, I don't know if they've been tracking their data or not, but that's the only reason that I felt like bringing this up. But it's a serious issue. Um, in past months, I think like maybe four months ago, eBay actually tried to address this issue and sort of like reconcile with sellers by offering them omission on their next um, exemption rather from eBay fees on their next three sales. Um, if they send you like some kind of email after you experience a buyer um, basically backing out of a sale. However, that was a one-off thing. eBay has not done anything to rectify that since as I get into our second Brilliant Stars pack. And it's just incredibly frustrating. So I guess I'm just throwing this out there to probe. So comment down below. I will say actually like and subscribe if you're enjoying this, please. I think it is time we start to try to grow the channel a little bit. But also comment down below if you are also a seller and you've been experiencing something similar. I refer to this situation as like deadbeat buyers because... Well, I, do I really need to explain that? But essentially, it's like people like the idea of buying a card more than they actually want to purchase it. And you know what? Buyer's remorse is a real thing. It's something that probably we've all experienced at some time or another. However, there is a right and wrong way to a, to handle buyer's remorse. You know what I mean? And I feel like naming your literally naming your price on a card and then flaking out is, in my opinion, unacceptable. So... With that being said, I don't really like just pointing out problems. I like to find solutions. So a potential solution would be if you name your price on an item, you decide you don't actually want that item as much as you thought that you would when the seller accepts it, reach out to them. I mean, what the frustrating thing is, like one of the frustrating things that I'm experiencing is that like the sellers just straight up ghost. They ghost out like it's just nuts. They will just not say anything. You know, I let a week go by and don't hear anything from them. And at that point, I'm just forced to remove the listing. And in that time, there's always the off chance that someone else might have won, may, may have come along to purchase that item and actually committed to buying it. So it's definitely like costing sellers both like time and money in multiple ways. And I think that it's a serious problem that is happening right now. And the macroeconomic thing that I think is causing this is like a lack of confidence in, how do I phrase this? So it's like a lack of confidence in the product, right? So in 2020 with that massive boom, I'm just grilling right into this third pack. So I'll probably sit with it open for a while. But um, in 2020 with that massive boom due to like a myriad of reasons, uh, people were buying everything left and right. Like I could list an item and as long as it was like within a reasonable price range or what, sometimes not even that. Like if I listed an item, chances are it would sell within like a couple of hours or a day or sometimes minutes. And that was definitely not the norm either, right? Like I had been selling cards a little bit prior to the whole 2020 boom. Um, before that, I was mostly just a consumer of products, but I never really experienced this problem, um, especially not in the upswing. So even in like early 2020, like pre the stuff happened, um, it was still just pretty normal. Like people just wouldn't hit buy if they didn't want to actually buy the product. And in 2020, you could sell anything that had the word Pokemon on it just for the sake of people wanting to stonk out. Now it appears that like we're in a market where there are deals to be had, um, there are some interesting cards still popping up that you like, you don't encounter on a regular basis, but you know, it's mostly like run of the mill items, like, you know, black star promos that are graded by CGC is a big one that I've had buyers flake out on like raw tops cards or things that I've had buyers flake out on. And it's just, it's just all over the place getting into our last pack here. Oh my gosh. Cynthia's ambition. Very cool. That is a lovely card. Wow. We're going to. Now, I don't have 4K here, but we're going to take a really close look on this. Look at that. Wow. That's worth a moment of silence right there. Beautiful card. Of all the Brilliant Stars cards that I've pulled, like this one, I will probably keep. Very neat. So I will sleeve this up if I can dig through this pile of open packs. But I don't even know where I left off with this rant that I'm having, but... It's just such an interesting thing. And I think that a lot of it has to do with like just the general market psychology and like the sentiment towards Pokemon. Like I believe that we're in a bit of a transition phase right now where like some buyers are 
still wanting to stonk out, like maybe they're looking for the right deal so that they can get their best quote unquote investment. Um, maybe, maybe it's that like people, wow, look at this hollowed. I don't see any scratches right now. That's cool too. Maybe it's that people like just find a better deal someplace, but even then, oh, there's this print line. Even then, I think that we get into like the ethical conversation of like, if you commit to purchasing an item, then you probably should follow through, right? Um, obviously, again, it's not like ruining my day or or my career by buyers doing this, but it is, uh, it's a thing that I'm concerned about. And I think that like, maybe this has something to do with like the health of the market too. So obviously it's like a market sentiment or it taps into the greater macroeconomic psychology of like where we're at in terms of buyer confidence. But I think also like, so if we're all engaging in this hobby together, we probably want to be surrounded by reliable people. And I think that like switching from seller mode to buyer mode, like as a buyer, I think that it is imperative to the health of the hobby that like you are thinking through your purchases before actually committing to them because there's no reason to have FOMO. Like again, this is not 2020 or 2021 trying to track down an ultra premium collection or anything like that. Like we're talking like singles and I sell a lot of graded cards too. So it's like these things are out there, you know, it's not like you have to stand in line at a Walmart at 6 a.m. to try to hunt for these objects. So it's like think before you decide to purchase because as a buyer, it's like, sure, other deals might come, but like, it's just the morality of the fact that you've made a commitment. And I think that it's a big character thing for me that like people follow through with commitments. And I don't know, maybe I'm wrong here. So maybe I'm thinking too much through the lens of a seller and not enough through the lens of a buyer. I would be very interested to hear your uh, commentary in the comment section down below. Since I only have like 130 subscribers, like I can be very active in responding to comments on my videos and I try to make it a point to do that. So just let me know what you're thinking. Like, am I, am I really far off here or has anyone else out there been noticing the same thing? If you're primarily a buyer, what are your thoughts on this? I mean, there's not going to be any scrutiny or judgment um, in a malicious way. So I'm open to hear this. I thought it'd be an interesting conversation to bring to the table because it's something that I've been seeing and been impacted by and you know it's a little bit worrisome so with that being said um our big hits for today we did pull actually this is kind of a good three pack blister so we pulled a flat v more peco i've hit that one quite a few times obviously the promo is stunning from this like sword and shield block can we take a second to talk about how the sword and shield block has been like pushing so hard on the evolutions and then also we hit Cynthia's Ambition, a very, very cool full art card. So awesome stuff. Again, thank you all so much for watching. Please do like, let's interact in the comment section. I enjoy that. I think my wife doesn't really enjoy me talking about Pokemon all the time with her. So um, any chance I can get to, you know, converse on the topic I enjoy. So thank you all again for tuning in and I hope to see you next time.